let's make a template so that we can preview our shapes and see how they fit into the kite. So I'm going to use extra thick template, template plastic and I save my scraps so that I can cut out shapes. Looks like this one. I'm going to line it up here on the corner and the template stick. My ruler, put it on the edge there and my paper cutter and it takes a little bit of strength. Push down hard. See if I got it. I got that one. The purpose of this is so that I can preview fabric and also if I'm shopping for fabric, I have the exact shape without the seam allowances. See if we got this one. Yep, it's going to crack off. Pull that off. And then this last side, yeah, it takes a little bit of strength. Now, these are self-stick templates. I like to use one I've used a little for a little while because it's easier to get them off because they really do stick. Sometimes you have to sacrifice a template just because it won't come off cleanly, but let's see on the plastic. There we go. Okay, so just peel this off and I can still use this template. I ordered these. They're things that come on clothing when you buy it to hold the tag and this is easily lost. I like a little hole in it and you can just hold it over the different motifs that you want to choose from and know how they're going to fit inside of that shape. I thought you might want to see this in action. I really like feathers on the kite and hopefully you can see that. That's a little bit better. And so what I'm going to do is I could put the template on the front and use a light box to determine if it's in the right place. I tend to like to put it on the back side because then I don't have to move it when I go to sew the shapes together. So I've come over to my light box. We're going to turned it on up high, the template's on the front, but I'm going to move it to the back like I had mentioned about the cutting. I am going to get it somewhere in that range, stick it on the back, flip this over. Well, I've got it in a pretty good position. Let's turn this light off and see if you get a better view of the template. There, you can see it right there. If I want, I can readjust it, but I'm pretty happy with right where it is. This little pink in the, at the end is going to kind of spiral in the center. Something that I want to point out to you, this tail feather here is beside well this flower yes there it's your match and i'll show you something in a minute but this tail feather is does not have the flower and so it's a different motif so sometimes things look really similar but they aren't the exact same motif so like i said you can put the templates on the front of the back since i've got this one on the back we'll line it up here turn it over line it up to what is here. It's a little hard to see here. I want to get it up there. There's a line for that. So everything lines up and then we'll just trim this out again and we'll do that six times so we can create the two inch hexagon kite. Some tips on finding the exact motif is these birds look very similar but this bird is flying that way and this little flower I mentioned is down there. So that's what I took it from. Now all these birds have tail feathers but they're not flying in the same direction. And in order for me to get the exact repeat, I've got to come all the way down here and find this one to find the exact repeat. I showed you how to cut the same motif when I did it from the back, but I think that was kind of hard to see. So I'm going to show you how to cut it from the front. Anything that we choose, this is a nice big flower. So I'm going to place it there and I can put it on the light box or hold it up to the light and see what I'm getting. But the idea is just for you to be able to see how to do it from the front because it's a much easier to see. This is the template I've been using when I made the other two inch hexagon. I want to make sure that I don't have any cuts that are going to come into the seam allowance, but I have room here for that. So we have it placed on the front. We're going to use add a quarter ruler and it butts right up against the template. Trim this one out and I want to show you from the front how I find a repeating motif because it's easier to see than what it was from the wrong side. Can use a spinning mat but sometimes the excess fabric just gets tangled up. I want to look at this. The easiest way to find out wh exactly where that'll be again is to look at this bird and see what direction it's flying in. Here's the same bird down here, but I've already cut that flower. So we're going to move down. Oh, actually, we didn't do the that. Sometimes you just have to think about what you're doing to find the repeat. So this bird is going this way. Oh, here's one down here. So here is this, and this is the same. See how... The tail feathers are matching up and these match up. Oh, that's getting kind of tight in there. I'll be all right. So I want to line these up, line those up. Some takes, it takes a little bit of there. Okay, so this little cut is 
isn't in the seam allowance. And these lines are lining up, the tail feathers are lining up, lining up here, and this stem lines up right there. So when I cut this out, I am going to get the exact same motif that I cut previously. So I'm just going to put the add a quarter ruler and move this so I get a better angle to cut with. And here we have the exact same motif that we cut previously. If I have cut my motif from the front, I'm going to just want, want to remove the template and then I can just center it, making sure that I have a quarter inch all around. So there are pros and cons to all of it. If you're cutting from the back, you don't need to move the motif, but I know that this point lines up with this little stem down here. So that can help me and that looks like a nice quarter inch all the ways around and then we're going to just put right sides together and we're going to stitch from corner to corner of the template tacking at the beginning and at the end not sewing through the template and once we do that we'll add to this side and then we'll remove the template and move it along until we have all the six kites sewn together this is a tip on how to center this again and you can eye it up or you can fold the template so that you've got the center there i can fold it across here to help line up there and then if you want you can fold your fabric find that same line but most of the time I'm just eyeing them up unless it's something that is going to be really hard to match up so I'm going to put this here in the center and this line here matching with that line there and the center line is matching so I'm just going to that down turn that over and that helps me line up my quarter inch if I want to repeat and cut another motif I have cut out the six kites and I think I think this is supposed to say two inch hexagon kites because it's one inch across here but when you put two of them together this you end up with a two inch hexagon at the end the way we sew these together are like everything else right sides together line them up put your needle down at the top of the template you want to back stitch so that doesn't come out and sew to the end and tack again open this up that looks pretty cool and then we're gonna sew another one on since we already had the template there. So right sides together, flip it over, put your needle down. This time it's going to tack for me. So to the end of the template, tack again. Then we're going to remove the template, move it over to the next kite, lining up my stitch lines with the edge of the template. Flip it over and add another kite right sides together and line it up and repeat the process for all six kites. With the kite, the first one you can sew to both sides, but then you move it along and it's just easier to move it to the next one and place it versus trying to center it on that piece of fabric. We're opening it up again, right sides together. This is five and we'll get six done in a second. This is the sixth one going on. I'm going to get that lined up. And when I put my needle down, I should just be going through the two layers of fabric. You can feel it. And then start stitching again to the end of the template. You can use the template on the last one, but you really don't need to. You're just going to turn it and flip it. Put your right sides together. And I can use my quarter inch foot. And when I do this, I want to come in quarter inch. And I can just eye that up so that I'm not sewing clear to the end. Put my foot down and it lines up on the edge and down here I just want to scoot this over a little bit there so it's lined up get these guys out of the way so I'm not sewing through the seam allowances and sew this seam and stop right in the center without sewing through the other seam allowances let's open it up and see what it looks like that is pretty fun and I'll iron it out and these templates I created so that you did not need to base glue or whip stitch you can sew these by hand or by machine we want to iron these so they lay as flat as possible what we're going to do is iron them in a spiral and this center will open up get a little steam in there they open up like that and then we'll flip them over and they look so beautiful i'm really loving these kite now give it one more press from the front quilter's clapper is a great way to just put it on top and it really flattens out your seams i usually just sew with white or fill thread if i'm sewing lots of dark things i'll switch it to a darker color but if i end up with this little center showing as a stick i will use one of the micron pens that i have that are permanent and this one luckily has happens to be purple and I can just color that thread in and it disappeared. 